Welcome back. In the last lesson, we saw that by using VSM, we can map the production flow on a piece of paper. Now, by production flow, what usually comes to mind is the flow of material. But there is one more flow of information. Now, why is this flow of information important? We all use the same material conversion process like stamping, welding and assembly. But great companies like Toyota, they regulate their production quite differently from the rest of us. The question they ask themselves is, how can we flow the information so that one process will make only what the next process needs? And only when it needs it, they control both quantity and time. With VSM, we can map the linkages between the material and information flow. No other tool does that. It is a powerful tool, but to use it efficiently, there are two prerequisites that have to be fulfilled. Number one, there has to be a value stream manager. Most of the companies tend to be organized by the departments or the function instead of the flow of value creating steps. So you will often find that no one person knows the entire material and information flow for any one product. And the best they can do is operate in a way that is optimum for their respective what we call isolated islands of processes. They can do process kaizens that will improve the cycle time of their individual processing area, but that will not improve the flow. So do not make the mistake of splitting up the mapping task among different area managers and then hope to stitch together their individual segments. It won't help. As we have seen in one of the earlier lessons, the delay is not in the process. The delay is in between the processes. What we need here is the value stream manager with the responsibility of identifying the delays in the flow and then improving it. He is responsible for implementing flow kaizens, which will reduce the lead time. This person has to have the power necessary to make the changes across the departments. So for this reason, they must report directly to the top management. Now both flow kaizens, that is value stream improvement and process kaizens, that is cycle time improvement are necessary in your company. Improvement in one improves the other. But the focus of value stream manager and the top management should be on flow kaizens that require a high vantage point to see and have greater impact on the flow. And the process kaizens like cycle time improvement and waste eliminations are to be left with the front line or the area managers. Once a value stream manager is identified, the next requirement is to select a product family. You might be having a lot of product in your portfolio, but your customer care about their specific product. So we will not be mapping everything that goes through the shop floor, at least not in the first go. Identify the product family. A family is a group of products that pass through similar processing steps. If your product mix is complicated, you can create a matrix with assembly steps and equipment on one axis and your products on the other axis. Now choose the products having a similar flow of processes and call them a family. Then write down clearly what your selected product family is, how many different finished part numbers are in your family and how much quantity is required by the customer and how often. Okay. Before moving on to make our first map, there is one more thing I want you to understand. The difference between push and pull type of production system. Most of us already know that in push system, the material is pushed down the process line based on a forecast or a predetermined schedule. And in the pull system, the material is pulled from the previous process based on the actual customer's demand. Now this statement is mostly correct, but at the same time pretty generic. So for VSM purposes, a production system will qualify as a pull system only when there is number one, a clearly defined level of inventory between two processes. And if the inventory reaches that limit, the upstream process will stop, no overproduction. And number two, the upstream process will only produce when there is a signal from the next process. I'm not saying the central planning department, but the next process. So if there is no signal or no Kanban from the next process, the upstream process will not produce. 
And after getting the signal or Kanban, the upstream process will produce only the quantity as mentioned in the Kanban. No more, no less. So when to make and how much to make. That means time and quantity both are controlled by Kanban. All right. Now we have covered almost all the basic requirements. In the next lesson, we are going to make our first value stream map. See you there.